Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today I would like to talk about ways to rethink our current testing strategy for COVID-19. Our current testing strategy clearly isn't working. We're using expensive nasopharyngeal tests that take several days for results and can often overdiagnose COVID-19. By the time we get the results, the infectious time may have passed for someone. Let me explain how rapid antigen testing used at home could help us get back to work and school safely and quickly. First, let me talk a little bit about the current rapid antigen testing that we're using now. There is rapid antigen testing available in doctor's offices, but the current forms that we have now use a nasal specimen on the anterior part of the nose, but still use expensive machinery it's not something that could be taken into someone's home and be used there. But I do feel like there's a movement within public health to use rapid antigen at home testing as a public health tool that could allow high frequency testing. We don't really need to know about patients that are positive but aren't infectious. We really only care about patients that are infectious. And these rapid tests at home can detect people that can transmit the infections at the time they take the test. Can you imagine doing a rapid antigen test at home on a strip of paper before you go to work and getting results in 10 minutes? You could test yourself every single day before heading into the office. This will change behavior and no contact tracing would even be needed. It is cheap and easy and could be done every day and done through a nasal swab. I do agree that frequency is more important than sensitivity. Sensitivity for these rapid at-home tests can be as low as 50%, but it's not a random 50%. It's the ones that are the most infective to others that will be positive on these rapid antigen home testing. We know that after about one week of infection from SARS-CoV-2, people are no longer infectious to others but they still will be positive with PCR testing because they'll still have bits of the virus within their body. Rapid testing is not to replace the PCR testing, but this rapid testing can be used more broadly. There is a place for PCR testing, such as in the hospital, when it's critical to know for sure if someone has any element of COVID-19 within their system. Let's talk a little bit about the threshold of transmissibility. This is a term that defines when a person can transmit the virus to another person. And PCR, as I mentioned, looks for fragments of RNA, so it's very sensitive, but it may be overly sensitive for COVID-19. Well, why isn't this rapid antigen at-home testing being done right now? Well, it's not because we don't have the ability to make these tests. It's actually available now. The holdup is due to regulatory issues with the FDA. The FDA want these rapid tests to be as sensitive as the current PCR tests, and they want a way to track and monitor the positive and negative results. But there has been recent movement towards approval by the FDA for antigen testing. On August 26, the pharmaceutical company Abbott received an emergency use authorization for an easy to use COVID-19 antigen test that uses a nasal swab. It's recommended for patients with symptoms and used within seven days of symptoms starting. You still must have a doctor's prescription and it's not for home use, but the machine is much less expensive than current machines and can be used more easily in doctor's offices. The federal government should be investing billions of dollars in high frequency testing as a public health tool, just like they're investing billions of dollars in producing a vaccine. We need to get at home rapid antigen testing approved in order to check someone multiple times a week before they head to school or work. If they're negative, they can proceed. If they're positive, they should stay at home and quarantine themselves. Another important tool that could be helpful is to report and use cycle times values. Let me explain. When any COVID PCR test comes back, it's either positive or negative. But there's another portion of the data that could be helpful called the CT or cycle threshold. The cycle threshold is the number of amplification cycles needed to find the virus. And the lower the CT number, the higher amount of virus you have circulating in your body. It's thought based on studies that the important CT number for spreading COVID to other people is around 30. 
but the problem is that many PCR tests are positive when this number is 40. This means that many people are receiving a positive PCR test when they're way past the threshold of being able to transmit the virus to other people. Yes, they do have bits of virus circulating in their systems. Yes, they did have COVID-19, but they're not infectious enough to spread that to someone else now. And essentially, this positive test may cause people to go into quarantine unnecessarily. Giving this number to physicians could be very helpful in educating patients about whether they're infectious to others. This CT number can be high either at the very initial start of an infection while it's on the way to becoming infectious to others, or more likely it's remaining high because of a prior infection, and it doesn't mean they're infectious now. The only way to clearly know would be to test with a PCR again within 24 hours to see if this number remains stable or lowers indicating a rise in the amount of virus. Remember, they're inversely proportional. But I still think just talking with a patient can allow doctors to know where they are in the timing of their COVID-19 infection. And knowing this number can certainly help with contact tracing. There are likely many positive PCR results that don't need contact tracing because they're beyond the time of being able to infect others, especially when the PCR results take several days to get back. There's an excellent New York Times article that I will reference in the description that helps explain this further. And any information written by Dr. Michael Minna is also useful on this topic. The fact that PCR testing may actually be too sensitive, takes so long to get back, and is expensive are reasons to pursue rapid antigen testing, especially at home rapid antigen testing. I'm hopeful that the FDA will continue to allow rapid antigen testing to move forward and eventually allow rapid antigen testing at home because we know that it can be done cheaply and made readily available so people could check daily or several times a week. If you would like to learn more about rapid antigen testing and push your governor and representatives to authorize rapid antigen testing in your state, please go to rapidtests.org. I'd like to give a special thank you to Dr. Michael Minna, who is continuing to push the United States to use this technology to control the pandemic. I think it's very exciting. Thanks again for joining me.